Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, please accept my humble obeisance as always to Shil Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Um, today, we are very fortunate to have Her Grace uh, Chiti Sakti Mataji from London joining us to uh, give us class on the topic of overcoming challenges in serving the spiritual master. Uh, today is the final part of this uh, series and uh, today's topic is ever increasing Vani Seva. Um, so, Hare Krishna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances always to Shri Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you so much, Mataji, for joining. Um, you can take over the class, Mataji. Thank you. Sure. Um, so, let's start with Mangalarshana. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yenatasmai Shri Guruvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Amano Pishtam Stapitam Yenabhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Atapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha <coughs> Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragnatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padhan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrinda Vineshari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vanchakalpa Trubhischa Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sadiga Ura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare so if I could invite devotees to put their cameras on, <clears throat> it makes it more personal. And um, I, I think it's, uh, I think you'll get more from me also. Um, <clears throat> as it makes it easier for me to connect. Uh, I understand if, if you're busy, but if those of you who are able to please do put on your um, cameras. So uh, thank you for having me again. So we're continuing with our three-part series. Today is the final part, as Srimati explained. And uh, today we are going to be discussing <clears throat> more on Vani Seva, ever-increasing Vani Seva. This uh, idea that actually there's never a time where we don't have service for the spiritual master. You know, with, with Vapu Seva, there's limitations to some degree because of geography, time, place, circumstance. Because some of it, not all, obviously there's a, a the, you know, even Vapu Seva is transcendentally governed, um, but there is the human side of it. So because there's a human side to it, uh, that is to some degree uh, influenced by geography, time and place, but Vani Seva is not. Vani Seva is that relationship with the spiritual master that service with the spiritual master which is rooted in continuously and consistently following the guru's instructions and it leads to ever increasing deepening relationship to the degree that we engage in serving the spiritual master's instruction and that can happen both whilst the spiritual master is physically present and of course after they have departed remember our relationship with guru tattva can't be interrupted unless we want it to be interrupted. Okay, so our relationship with Guru Tattva is not dependent on the physical presence of the Guru. It's not even actually ultimately dependent on what the Guru's standing is. You know, sometimes devotees are concerned with, okay, what if the Guru falls down? What if the Guru is not consistent, etc. Ultimately, it's not even really dependent on that. The thing it's most dependent on is our ability to connect with following through on the instructions because the instructions are eternal. Um, the instructions are irrespective of time, place, and circumstance. And the instructions are always there ultimately for us to reestablish our relationship with Krishna. So even if 
the personality who is currently the medium for those instructions and for Guru Tattva and the empower that, empowerment that comes through that, it can't be interrupted just because one personality is not available or unable to do it. It can come through anyone because ultimately Guru Tattva is Krishna and rooted in Lord Balaram. So I want to share a couple of things uh, before we build uh, and move forward. So this is from Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 6, Verse 27. The translation is, Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the well-wisher and friend of all living entities, formally explained this transcendental knowledge to the great Saint Narad. Such knowledge is extremely difficult to understand without the mercy of a saintly person like Narad. But everyone who has taken shelter of Narad's disciplic succession can understand this confidential knowledge. Srila Prabhupada's purport. It is stated here that this confidential knowledge is extremely difficult to understand. Yet, it is very easy to understand if one takes shelter of a pure devotee. This confidential knowledge is also mentioned at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, where the Lord says, Sarva dharmam parityagya ma mekam sharanam vraja. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. This knowledge is an extremely confidential secret, <clears throat> but it can be understood if one approaches the Supreme Personality of Godhead through the bona fide agent, the spiritual master in the disciplic succession from Narad. Understanding does not depend upon high parentage. The living entity is, is certainly pure on the spiritual platform. And therefore, anyone who attains the spiritual platform by the grace of the spiritual master can also understand this confidential knowledge. So in this purport, and in this verse, what we're really understanding is that what's really being explained to us is that surrender to the spiritual master invokes the mercy and the good wishes. This mercy and good wishes of the guru is like a catalyst, an activator for us to reawaken, realize and reconnect with this transcendental knowledge. And what is this transcendental knowledge? Now, spiritual knowledge is not like material knowledge. Spiritual knowledge and realization and experience all go hand in hand. It's not that just our brain gets filled with information. There is a realization, a change in the heart, which then affects a change also in the way we live, the way we think, and the way we feel. <clears throat> you know, what? In, this, in essence, what is transcendental knowledge? Transcendental knowledge is related to these three aspects of spiritual life, Abhideya, Sambandha, and Prayojana, okay? Essentially, what we're understanding is, who am I? Who is Krishna? What's my relationship with him? And how do I live in that relationship with Krishna, both in this world, in the human experience, and ultimately in my siddha, in my transcendental experience, in my ultimate identity. And similarly, this Vani Seva, or this serving the spiritual master in separation, whether that separation is geographical or whether that separation is because the spiritual master is no longer physically present, also has these two elements, the element of the human, the external, the, the lived experience whilst we're here, and the internal side, the eternal side. In our first session, I think it was, we talked about the four different types of disciple. And the first class disciple knows what the guru wants without being instructed. Now, this does not mean the first class disciple is psychic, has mystical powers. <laughs> you know, it's nothing like this. It's actually very simple. It is a matter of training. When we are trained, repeated, so when we, what does training mean? We are repeatedly doing the same thing over and over again. So not only do we become perfect at it, but it becomes natural. Think about so many things we all do here without thinking about it, because actually when we were young, we repeatedly did it. Do you think about it really, really conscientiously? I must brush my hair today. No, it's natural. You brush your hair because you've been brushing it every day. For the last however many decades, 365 days a year at least, okay? If you comb me even just once a day, brushing your teeth, taking a bath, all of these things, eating, going to bed at a particular time. When you repeatedly do something, it becomes 
part of our nature. So this first class disciples mood is that one has repeatedly heard and executed the spiritual master's instructions so regularly and so consistently that it has become part of our nature. Surrender is natural. Fulfilling the instructions and knowing what the instructions are is natural. There is a um, human side to that and then also the transcendental side. What is the transcendental side? The human side is the endeavor and the transcendental side is the result. So as we endeavor to fulfill the guru's instructions, we are already fulfilling the guru's instructions. Am I making sense? I think I made a point last time about Srila Prabhupada and how by taking Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's instructions so seriously and wholeheartedly from the beginning, everything he did in preparation to get the result of that or achieve the result of the instruction was, fulf was fulfilling the instruction. Okay, so every time we try, <clears throat> every time we pick ourselves up, and laugh, dust ourselves off, laugh at how the mind is so crazy, and say, I'm still gonna try. We are repeatedly fulfilling the instruction. We're repeatedly following. And as we do it more and more, we get the material and the spiritual intelligence, both, because both come from Krishna, both are facilitated by uh, Krishna's Shakti, Krishna's love, um, on how to execute. And we eventually get to a point where we have full surrender, where our body, mind, words, thoughts, actions are consistent with what Guru wants. And ultimately, what does this lead to? This leads to the storehouse you know, of love that we have for Krishna in our hearts, that we have for our entire community in the spiritual world, starting to overflow and manifest. What are the most important instructions? Are there, is there such a thing as the most important instruction? Is there such a thing as a special service? Is there such a thing as the best service? Well, let's hear from Bhagavad Gita. So this is uh, Prabhupada. He's just speaking briefly uh, in a purport. This is an excerpt from uh, chapter two, verse nine. Although Arjun, for the time being, was overwhelmed with false grief due to family affection. He surrendered unto Krishna, the Supreme Spiritual Master, as a disciple. This indicated that he would soon be free from the false lamentation resulting from family affection and would be enlightened with perfect knowledge of self-realization or Krishna consciousness and would then surely fight. Has anybody on this call ever been requested by their guru to win a battle, to go out and fight as their instruction for self-realization? No, no, nobody's going to have weapons training. <laughs> why, why, why am I raising this? <clears throat> Arjun's spiritual master was Krishna. Krishna's instruction was to fight. We wouldn't ordinarily think fighting a war would constitute fulfilling the spiritual master's instructions, right? But for Arjun, it was the secret to his success. It was his guru, Krishna, told him, you want to express your love for me and you want to wake up your love for me? Fight. Put aside what your mind and emotions are telling you and fight. And here's the knowledge by which you can understand that there's something more authoritative more real and a higher experience than just what your mind and feelings tell you. And it's interesting because our mind and feelings and thoughts play a very big role in how seriously we take certain instructions, right? Sometimes the mind tells us, oh, look, this person has this instruction. You, the instruction you've got is so small. Okay. Oh, look at this God brother of yours. He's been given 10 instructions. And Guru Maharaj just simply smiled and nodded. You see? Oh, look at this. You know, why have I been, what, what's going on? Why have I been given so many instructions? And Guru Maharaj is just happy with this devoting of Jan, such a small thing. You see? So actually, the instructions we receive, the uniqueness of the instructions we receive, 
are part of the intimacy of the guru-disciple relationship. Just hold on to, on to that for a moment. If we are seeing that our mind is telling us that, okay, you've been given more or less, we can flip that. Actually, no, I've just been given something different because what I've been given is perfect for me. Now we all have this basis of chanting our 16 rounds, living a life that enables the four principles of freedom and cooperating with each other. But the details that surround those um, instructions in terms of how we live our life, in what activities we do during the day, they are gonna vary. They're gonna vary by our varna. They are gonna vary by our ashram. They are also gonna vary according to our level of surrender because a guru will have different expectations depending on how we grow and how we develop. So, and I saw this in my relationship also with Pakistan like, Damaraj, that, you know, in the beginning, it was very much about encouragement, very much about having confidence in the instructions, uh, in the guru, in confidence in some ability to execute the service I was being asked to do. And then as the relationship developed, the expectations changed. More was expected. And that's not necessarily quantity. More was expected in terms of quality a deeper degree of cooperation, a deeper degree of, and a greater degree of expectation from guru that I should make myself, you know, really surrender and tolerate discomfort for the benefit of others. Because ultimately, something has to die for us to live. And what has to die is the false ego. And so much of our comfort, and happiness about our relationship with the guru in the human experience starts off with actually our ego being happy, right? Our false ego being happy. But as we were discussing last week, our service isn't about, you know, guru disciple relationship isn't about enjoying the guru. But enjoying the guru can be so subtle. Whenever I come near the guru, I feel happy. I feel like my guru likes me. I feel, feel like my guru pays attention to me. Um, these, these do, they do to some degree come from the false ego. Actually, they, to a large degree, they come from the false ego, but it needs to be there to give us some security in the relationship with the guru in the beginning. But as the relationship deepens, if our main way of connecting with the guru is still based on that, then we're making very slow progress, right? So then more is expected. Um, I'm just thinking if I should share this past time or not. Okay, maybe I'll park it till later. <laughs> it doesn't quite, doesn't quite um, I mean, it fits right now, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll bring it in a little bit later. But what I wanted to share with you is, you know, I shared with you earlier about Paktidurta Maharaj, you know, having this mood that he would write to Srila Prabhupada while Srila Prabhupada was on the planet when he was preaching behind the Iron Curtain. And he kept this, mood of writing to Srila Prabhupada even and practice even after Srila Prabhupada left. And this strengthened his relationship with Prabhupada every single year. Because like we said, the Guru's mercy cannot be interrupted by the absence of the physical presence of the spiritual master. That reciprocation is always going to be there. But we can use our human experience with the spiritual master to strengthen the transcendental experience of the spiritual master okay so i have a question for you be honest i want you to make a note of this because we're going to sequentially answer a few questions okay how many times a day do you remember your spiritual master About, uh, <laughs> so maybe I think four or five times. 
Okay, four or five times. Okay, I wasn't expecting people to share, but if you want to, let's do it. Let's be open. Oh, I else? You, oh, I yeah, yeah, no, you that's fine. That's a, I was saying to people to write it down, but that's fine if you want to share. That's good. Thank you for your honesty. Four or five times. Anyone have more than that or less than that? Okay, Namrata says more often. Okay, more often could be six times. <laughs> it's like, or it could be a thousand times. Um, how often? So make a note for yourself if nobody else wants to share. Okay, five or six times, okay? Um, five or six times. Anybody here go a day without thinking of their spiritual master even once? Hare Krishna Mataji, it depends. From right now, it is more often, like okay. almost all the time, but because Guru Maharaj is here, but otherwise, yeah, I sometimes don't think of him at all. Okay, then, okay. Good, thank and, you for your... And maybe only during the rounds, because I chant his, um, the, the mantra, the pranam mantra, so I will, and actually, yeah, it will become four times, no matter, because I chant his pranam mantra before the rounds, and I chant the pranam mantra before offering the bhoga, so then I obviously think, but it is very, very splitting, it's not okay. meditation. So somebody else has also offered up that they think of the spiritual master once in the morning um <clears throat> during puja anyone else yes okay. so if you can't uh mataji if you can't yes. it's uh, like uh mataji said earlier on uh offering bhoga time and chanting time then yes five to six times it happens because you know <laughs> when we are chanting the mantra we do remember okay. Guru. So you're already telling me that there is something you do in the day that naturally makes you think of the spiritual master, right? Because you're using your human body to pray. You're using yes. your human mouth to chant the guru's pranam, right? Yes. Answer this question for yourselves honestly. When you chant the spiritual master's pranam, do you remember your spiritual master or do you just rattle off the pranam mantra? So, because actually we say the pranam also when we pay obeisances when we enter the temple room, right? So just, you don't have to, you, you can share if you want to, but no pressure, just at least for yourselves. Because this is about wake, waking ourselves up to how we relate to the activities that are there to help us think of the spiritual master in their absence. So when you chant your guru's pranam, either when paying obeisances, when offering bhoga, when chanting your rounds, do you actually think, of your spiritual master or are there times and how often for you do you actually just say the mantra and don't, there's no visualization of the guru or emotion about the guru or thought of the guru it's just you just rattle off the mantra be honest with yourselves well at the time of bhoga offering yes because uh, i've kept guru maharaj's photograph right in front of my or my my you know whenever I'm offering that's exactly that place I've kept Guru Maharaj's photograph so I make sure like you know it, it gives me the okay so, so a picture helps you Satya Bham yeah. you were unmuting yeah definitely so for me as well what um, you know as Swaha Mataji was saying that for offering definitely I desperately call him out that uh, just please offer it to Krishna because I feel like I'm, I'm nowhere near to offer it to another you know, lordships so I desperately ask him and Prabhupada to come and offer it to the lordships for any services basically I ask him to come and be present with me and help me offer but uh, yeah for chanting as well sometime like when I start my 16 rounds I definitely call him out but many a times I just, you know, when I'm doing an afternoon or evening, when I'm doing my chanting, I just start my chanting with Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya rather than doing the full pranam mantra. So that's my, you know, bad habit that I, I should, you know, remember of the guru, my, my spiritual master. So something that I definitely need to improve on. Okay. And Namrata is saying, yes, visualization uh, is something that um, she does. So you're, you know, th this is the thing we've got natural habits okay natural activities that Srila Prabhupada's given us to help us to think of the spiritual master and those of you who have got second initiation you've got your Gayatri and the Gayatris that are dedicated to thinking of the spiritual master and so you will do that also three times a day there are many opportunities throughout the day when we have something built in to think of the spiritual master okay so this um this uh, this mood that come on 
even the spiritual master isn't physically present Everybody I'm not the presence of this sorry could some, whoever's in the background could you mute your um microphone um we have sorry have habits and processes and practices that invoke the presence of the spiritual master what do i mean by this so guru is not limited by physic physical body when we invoke the presence of the spiritual master by prayer by thought through a visualization through a picture the spiritual master is present after pakistan Maharaj left we had a very nice darshan with um, shiva Maharaj. And he said that actually we can even continue our service to the spiritual master when we're chanting our rounds. He said that actually when we're chanting, we can meditate on serving the spiritual master. And he said, for one who is liberated, that service is actually happening. And if we're not liberated, then that service is happening in the mind and it's continuing to purify us and strengthen our relationship with the spiritual master. So, as much as possible, and this will help your Vapu Seva as well, um, as much as possible, those practices we already have built into our sadhana to help strengthen our re relationship with the spiritual master and help to fuel following the Guru's instructions, please tend to them attentively. The reason I say this is it's no faster to chant the Guru's pranam inattentively than it is to do it attentively. But when we do it attentively, the presence and the relationship is strengthened. And then what then happens is outside of those activities, when we're doing other things or endeavoring to fulfill other instructions, the mind and thoughts and feelings are less clouded. They're much sharper, they're much clearer, and we're less likely to get bewildered. Okay, so there are things that we have we we'll repeat this again, that are already in our sadhana to increase the Vani Seva. So, Chidi Shakti, thank you so much. I really wanted to, you know, uh, ask one question, two questions basically on this. One, when you said that uh, when you're liberated, then you're definitely, when you are liberated or when your spiritual master is liberated? When we then that, uh, When we are liberated. So, so that stage is very high stage, I guess? Yes. Yes, okay. I mean, and what, what what does liberation mean? Liberation. I mean, liber, liberation is not prema, okay? But liberation means that we're not so tied down and bound by our karmic activities here, by our thoughts, feelings, etc. So actually, the absorption in serving the spiritual master in the mind is as good as being physically present with them, because the false ego is more or less dead. Um, to the degree that the false ego is alive, then that, that service is happening more on a mental platform, but it's still there, it's still service, much like uh, when we serve Krishna here, even if we're serving with the false ego in the body, with this mind, it's still service, but the result of that service is purification, right? So it's not that one is better than the other, they're just different stages. Perfect, thank you, understood. And about, you know, when we, when we are offering and uh, when we are calling our spiritual master, and I had asked this question to Guru Maharaj as well, I always feel that uh, I hope he comes and, you know, offer it to Lord, otherwise he'll be hungry. And uh, uh, Guru Maharaj told me that, understand that this is a, is this not a material moment? It's a spiritual, it's a science, scientific moment. And when you call, the Guru comes. And again, I'm asking this, <laughs> this question that how does it makes, you a, makes it a scientific moment? And, when you when do you really call? Does the guru really get? I know it's a very childish childish question, but uh, do you think that when you call the guru hears? Because you know the world is definitely material, and I know we shouldn't see our guru as you know material person. But how do you explain this, please? When you offer food to Krishna, how do you know it's prashad? Do you see the <laughs> items from the plate? <laughs> Yeah, I just, yeah, no, that's true. Okay, no, I I'm just, asking the question. How do you know it's Prashad? How do you know Krishna has accepted it? Yeah, this is what I feel like if I've made it with my heart, like, you know, if I'm really telling him to come and eat, then he would, he would honor it. Yeah, that's how I feel like he has accepted it. So if you're calling your spiritual master with your heart, if you call any person with your heart, how can they refuse? 
Yeah. Our whole basis for Krishna consciousness is the science of love. So the basis of our relationship with Guru is also the science of love. Okay, the mm. potency. Of, so when we call the spiritual master with love, the spiritual master is there. Okay. Even an ordinary person, when you think of them, depending on your degree of affection for them, they'll know. Who here has a best friend? They thought of them and they thought of you and you both called each other at the same time. Oh, I was just about to call you. I can't believe you called me, right? That's how close you're about. Then that's just, that's just working on a metaphysical level. Mm -hmm. On a spiritual level, it's even deeper. So mm -hmm. how do we know that the guru has called us? Yes, there's got to be some degree of faith. But if it's with love, they've definitely heard us. You know, this is, this is, this is even our approach to japa, right? Even out to a... Uh, when we're chanting the Maha Mantra, real chanting is when we call Krishna with love. That's like real, right? From, from who we actually are, because who we actually are only loves Krishna. We're not tripping over false ego. We're not umming and eyeing. We're not in doubt. We're not meditating on a thousand other things. All we do really in our real life is love Krishna and love each other and love our entire community. Everything else, every other problem is a problem of our physical existence and our false ego. Okay, so how do we really know this? If you call with love, the spiritual master is there. But developing that love is a result of repeatedly calling the spiritual master, repeatedly serving the spiritual master. So these activities uh, fuel ever increasing Vani Seva. Okay, they, they, strengthen our relationship with the guru they strengthen our relationship with the guru's instruction and they bring clarity steadiness and affection what do i mean by affection it is very easy to be affectionate or have affection for somebody who we are grateful for it is very difficult to care about someone we have no gratitude for. And when we stop seeing the effects of the mercy that our spiritual master sends us, or spiritual masters send us in our day-to-day -day life, we become ungrateful. And when we become ungrateful, we lose our affection and affiliation for the guru. So really to keep the magic alive, to keep the Krishna magic alive, to keep the guru magic alive, the first place we can start, it's a simple thing, you don't have to, so I always say to people, don't try and add more activities in, improve the quality of what you already have. So whenever you have those times in the day, when you are calling the spiritual master, japa, bhoga offering, paying obeisances, it's one mantra. Be present, because by being present with that one mantra, it makes it easier then to be present with the next one, which is calling on Panchatattva, right? So then you attract Guru's mercy, and then you attract Panchatattva's mercy. And then they're all there, okay, yeah, we'll protect you from your false ego and your mind and your millions of other desires so that you can chant the holy name nicely. And as we chant the holy name nicely, then actually we're just operating on a completely different platform. And the, yes, the mind and our feelings, our thoughts, other people's sorts of feelings, they will come back. We're always being bombarded by that. But it's like arrows falling on armor. They just fall and bounce off, right? We, we really, really get um, transcendent, our transcendental immune system is like in full force. So start there. If we want to increase our Vani Seva, start with what we're already doing. So with your Gayatri mantras, with your Pranam mantras, start there then as those go well, you can include other factors or other activities to strengthen the Vani Seva, okay? To strengthen the impetus to follow the instructions. What do I mean by this? Who here finds it much easier to follow the spiritual master's instructions when they know that they're on the way or that they're here, right? Aren't we all on our best behavior when we know Guru Maharaj is on their way or Guru Maharaj is already here, right? We're more attentive in our rounds, we're more attentive in arti, we're nicer to each other. We do everything much better. Oh, best start waking up early so that when Guru Maharaj comes, I can tell him I'm getting up early. <laughs> right, everybody's nodding. Right, 
So this impetus, because there's this consciousness that spiritual master is here. So these activities that we're talking about are, let's get it really strengthened, locked down, it getting into this mood that the spiritual master is actually here. So these mantras help. Now, other activities, which again, because that mood of, oh, the spiritual master isn't here, can even be experienced in Vapu Seva. You know, I was sharing with you last time that I would, in, uh, after doing my service in the evening, I would write Guru Maharaj a letter, even if we were in the same building. Sometimes I would write to him while he was sitting on the other side of the room, I would sit at the table and write him a letter because I did not want to lose that relationship uh, and connection of guru disciple because so much of my day-to-day -day activities were dealing with physical things, especially in those final few months. And it was extremely powerful because it reminded me that Gurudev is still here. Because otherwise the mind is like, oh yeah, guru needs you to do this, guru needs you to do that, and you're doing this, and you get caught up in those di various different external roles. So same thing, even if the guru physically leaves uh, or is geographically far away, how do we keep the guru alive day to day so that we feel like guru lives here and that gives us the impetus to be our best selves, to live our best spiritual life. So one is these activities, and then, start to introduce things you can for example keeping in touch once a month at least write to the spiritual master even if the spiritual master is not physically present and even if the spiritual master is in another country even if you know that they're traveling and you may not get a response write once a month you get into that habit it's like a dear diary people who are in the habit of a dear diary right writing their dear diary whether it's to dear diary or to krishna or to guru or to somebody else once you get used to it, it's almost like it's unusual to not do it, right? So get in the habit. And actually, outside of sending it once a month, you can even um, write every day. Why not? You know, so many devotees are running journaling workshops and classes uh, as a form of self-expression, uh, self-exploration, uh, deepening our relationships uh, with Guru and Krishna use it if you're a journal if you like journaling if that's something that's uh comes to you or you'd like to take it up use it to write to the spiritual master every day okay because you will feel like but you will experience the spiritual master's presence whilst you're writing and afterwards if you don't like journaling what else can you do you can dictate something on your phone like a conversation it might even feel awkward like, oh my god how can i say these things to my spiritual master but you watch as you keep doing it Go back to the ones you did six months ago and you'll see how much you've grown in your relationship. You'll see how much easier it is to open up to the guru, how much easier it is to be honest and how much more affection you feel. I remember one disciple came uh, to see Gurudev in the final months and uh, said, oh, before you leave, I really want to reveal my mind to you. And they said so many things. And at the end, Guru Maharaj said, Thank you for revealing your mind to me. Now reveal your heart to me. Right, so um, some of you, I think somebody mentioned last week, I find it really, that they find it really difficult to speak to the guru uh, in personal presence. And some of that's there, you know, the chastisement, we talked about chastisement through consciousness. Also, sometimes there's personality differences. There's so many reasons you might be just stressed about something else. Maybe the opportunity isn't there. But there's no one between you and Guru if you sit down and write or dictate something to them. Because they'll receive it. Because Guru Tattva is beyond the Guru's body. It doesn't matter if they're first class, second class, or third class. It's just to the degree that they're more evolved, they're, they're the, the way they become aware of it might be slightly different. Right? I've heard many of Guru tell me that... Somehow or another, when they're serving the disciples in the mood that I'm at your service, okay, whatever the disciple needs just seems to happen without them really being fully cognizant of why they're saying what they're saying or doing what they're doing. The more evolved the guru is, the more aware they are. You know, I sometimes I can't remember which pastimes I've shared with you. And not, so if, I, if I'm repeating myself, forgive me. I had, a, I had a letter from Guru Maharaj once, really quite out of the blue. 
And I, I would speak to him regularly. So this one was like, oh, this is unusual. He's emailing me. I, I'm going to speak to him tomorrow anyway. Um, and he emailed me about something, gave me some instructions, and he ended it with, you know, you're probably wondering why I'm raising this topic since we've never spoken about it. But know that Krishna sometimes directly tells the spiritual master what's going on for the disciple so that the spiritual master can intervene. And this ability for the spiritual master to intervene in our lives goes on beyond the physical presence of the spiritual master. You know, Pastor Maharaj would often say that actually, in one sense, he'll be able to intervene and do so much more for us after he leaves this world, because he won't be restricted by his body and the human brain and the human mind. Yep, he'll be fully able to be present and intervene. So there are many people, even non-initiated disciples, shiksha disciples, some people who've never met Maharaj, who give very clear descriptions of not only do they have strong affection for him, but they have dreams of him. He comes in their dreams to give them protection and to offer them instruction. Why? Because Guru Tattva is alive. Guru Tattva is as alive as Krishna. Guru Tattva is as dynamic as Krishna. Because ultimately, Guru Tattva is Krishna. Governed by Lord Balaram, by the love and mercy that comes from Lord Balaram. Can't be interrupted and it can't be destroyed. And it can be ever-increasing. So actually, relate to, relating to our spiritual masters in their absence in a healthy way, even whilst they're still on the planet, sets us up for being stronger when they do one day leave. Because it won't be so difficult for us to adjust. So it's not that I'm trying to say this, to, oh, let's, let's all be doom and gloom. You know, your guru is gonna leave one day, you might as well get used to it. What I'm saying is this is exciting because we can experience the esoteric and transcendental side of the relationship with the spiritual master, even whilst they're physically on the planet, without having to wait for them to physically come to our country or town or village or even home. And then when you do see them face to face, it's even more ecstatic because that relationship is getting stronger and stronger. Marish said um, that actually when the guru leaves, it's a very, very potent time. The weak get weaker and the stronger get stronger. So if we have this mood that, okay, Guru's not physically with me right now, but what can I do to invoke the presence of my spiritual master? How can I tweak what I'm already doing and what activities can I add in? Then um, we are assured to have strong relationships. And then following the instructions becomes easy. As this following the instructions becomes easier, it stops being a matter of practicing following and it becomes natural. And then it just surrender becomes who we are. Um, I'm conscious of time. So should we open up for some more questions? Ah, oh, one other point, sing. Sing to the spiritual master. You know, Guru, uh, Guru Puja is very powerful. The Guru Vashtaka is very powerful. These prayers are not just for when we go to the temple. Do them in your homes. Our homes are temples. Okay. One of the things about being Grahastas is, you know, if, you are, if we live in our homes like they're a temple, you are the temple president of your home. So think like a temple president. What does a temple president think like? How can I increase the spiritual potency of this hub? for the community. So how do we increase the spiritual potency of our hope? Sing, whether it's morning or evening, sing the prayers to the spiritual master. Morning or evening, sing bhajans to Krishna. You know, it's much easier to sing bhajans and kirtan in a heartfelt manner than to just read the prayers or recite them. Why? Because when we read and recite, this conscious mind brings blocks and distractions. But when we sing, the mind doesn't interfere so much, right? Because the music from the instruments, the music of our voice, because our voice is an instrument, it drowns out thoughts. 
and it becomes a medium for our feelings. So this is another thing. If you like singing, sing to the spiritual master, about the spiritual master, for the spiritual master. Um, so, uh, Srimati, do you want to field the questions? Yes. Yes, Mataji. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, devotees, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, um, go ahead. I've had one directly to me. It would be helpful if people either put them in the chat room or put their hands yeah. up. If yes, anything is fine. Yes. Do you have a question directly? Yes. Yeah, so I've got one. Uh, someone's asking me, what do I miss about my spiritual master the most? Um, that's a very hard question <laughs> to answer, to say one thing the most. Uh, I can't think of one thing the most. Um, I, I, I do miss personal service um, because I, I was very attached to personal service. But I have to say, most of the things that I could experience in Guru Maharaj's presence, I can experience, you know, it's possible to experience even here. Sri Devi saying, Gita Nagri Kirtan, yes. Yes, of course. His Harinams, his Kirtans were amazing. Um, I don't think I've been on Harinams like that since, and Kirtans like that since. I mean, I remember when we were in Ireland, <laughs> we, I think it was 2000, uh, we started, Marsh, uh, Guru Maharaj started Kirtan at Mangal Arti. And then the Kirtan continued through uh, Tulsi Puja, through Japa time all the way through to Guru Puja and then carried on through Guru Puja and ended when we had to start class. So that was a three hour long Mangal Arati <laughs> and Guru Puja combined. So yeah, and Hari Nams were amazing. But uh, in terms of that personal association, of course, you know, the personal association, the Kirtans, um, but actually the, the bulk uh, of the guru disciple relationship the bulk of the relationship can be it's, it's easy to experience if we want to if we want to connect with the person through service through following the instructions uh you can have most of those things but yeah the, um marge was unique in that uh his uh even the human experience of bhakti dirta marge was very, very, um, how do I say it? He was a really wonderful person to be around, you know, uh, as even as a human being, uh, he was a wonderful person to be around. And then you add on top of that, his transcendental potency and his love for Krishna. It's like a, it's a, it, every moment is like a festival. <laughs> so yeah, that I miss, that I miss. Every moment felt like a festival. Namrata? Yes, Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, so, uh, you mentioned about the journalism. So, uh, I think I, I uh, about Chandramoli Maharaj only, I heard him in an interview uh, with the Chait, his grace, um, Chaitanya Yes, Chaitanya Charan uh, Prabhuji. So he was mentioning about the uh, <coughs> uh, journaling, uh, you know, whatever he himself journals about uh, Prabhupada, that whatever he feels, he I think it's a, it's a part of his routine that he do that. Mm -hmm. So at that time, uh, I also uh, was inspired. And he at that time, he also mentioned that he keeps uh, his journals open for his disciples. But the thing is, uh, uh, the disciples has to demand that. I mean, they have to ask for it. Guru doesn't give it direct. I mean, uh, okay. you, have to, you have to ask uh, if you want to read those journals. Okay. So, uh, so... I was just questioning, being on the initial level, can we ask 
or is it too early to ask Guru Maharaj for that? Have you asked your guru the same question? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, frankly telling, I, I'm a little, uh, you know, afraid of, uh, um, you know, directly communicate and communicating so much with him. So I'm just asking you because uh, this work, this uh, this session was specially for uh, guru. So I mean, I'm clearing all my doubts in this. Sure. If you, if, if Chandra Mali Maharaj has explicitly said you can read my journals to Srila Prabhupada, you just have to ask for it, then, then there's no, it's too early or too late to ask, uh, to have a look. But maybe, you know, ask one of uh, your god sisters or god brothers who has more insight into this. Um, and actually, Russia Prabhu is here. And uh, he's also got his hand up. Hare Krishna Prabhu, did you want to take that? Did you want to comment on that? No. Nope. You don't want to comment on it? <laughs> okay. I thought you were raising your hand because you wanted to say something uh, to Namrata. No, but I, 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 okay. If uh, actually Namrata, I would if, I would request if if Marsh thinks it's too soon for you, he'll tell you. Yeah. I mean, if Marge wanted it only for certain disciples, I think he would have said, oh, okay, you can only look at it once you've had first initiation or only look at it once you've had. So if he said, actually, it's available for you, uh, and Sri Devi saying, you can ask, no problem. There you go. <laughs> so I uh, hope that answers your question. So I'm going to go to Risha Prabhu. You had your hand up. Thank you very much. I was, uh, I wasn't... Uh... Thank you very much. Uh, I didn't uh, know the answer to the question, so sorry for that. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out, and I have to say that uh, uh, I have actually been uh, lately really, really a lot with Maharaj. Uh, I had like a, a few inputs from devotees that kind of like, confused me. They say that uh, in, a, in, in a sense, you are servant to Maharaj, but they said if you just try to be a servant, if you try to be a friend, then you want to you should always try to be a friend as well to the spiritual master. So is this something that you need to kind of push to try to happen or actually just be a servant and it, it happens, it happens. Do you have any comments on that? Mm. Um, it depends on how you understand the term friend. Okay. We even look at our relationship with Krishna. If we look at the nine, um, you know, nine aspects of devotional service one of them is sakyam being a friend to krishna so and krishna says to arjun i'm revealing this knowledge to you because you're my friend and devotee so what do we mean by friend friend doesn't necessarily if we're just looking at it as a friend is like a, a pal a peer kind of thing that's not so much going to be there for every disciple right because there'll be some disciples where the age or stage or personality might invoke more of that kind of friendship externally but actually being a friend to to the guru in essence means being the guru's well-wisher right how was arjun krishna's friend he was his well-wisher he cared about krishna so in our service to the spiritual master yes there are you know we don't want to make offenses but Having this mood that I want to serve in a way that I avoid offenses is quite a restrictive mentality, right? It means we're constantly avoiding, avoiding. And when we avoid, um, it's disempowering. Does that make sense? It's kind of like, oh my God, it's like, oh, I don't want to do anything wrong. But if we think like a friend, actually, what is going to be best? What is the best way to do this? Because I care about my spiritual master then that's empowering because when you think what is the best rather than how do I avoid the worst, then your mind and heart open up to opportunity and possibility. And if we're busy doing the right thing, then there's less time to do the wrong thing. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. And that was a nice question. Thank you for asking that. 
Um, there's one question I've had directly, uh, and it's a, I'll answer it very briefly. Can you have more than one Diksha Guru? Uh, no, generally we have one Diksha Guru, but um, Shiksha Guru, you can have as many as you want. So Shiksha is instruction. Um, Diksha is the person who formally connects us to Guru Parampara. And ideally, if we can, we get Shiksha and Diksha from the same person, but it depends. Uh, and in any case, when the spiritual master is physically not available, either through departure or ge geography, it's important to have Shiksha gurus who can instruct us, who understand the mood of the, the spiritual master uh, and can guide us in a non-contradictory way. Uh, so sh Shiksha gurus, instructive gurus, we can have many. Diksha guru, we usually have one. Any other questions or comments? Is there anything uh, on, Srimati, is there anything on Facebook or? No, Mataji, uh, we don't have any on Facebook. No problem. Sridevi Mataji, please go ahead, Mataji. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Chiti Shakti, Shakti Mataji, please accept my most humble obeisances, all glories to Prabhupada. All glories to our wonderful Bhakti Tita Maharaj and Chandramali Maharaj. Thank you so much for doing these series of uh, classes for us. I think it's very, very instructive and extremely illuminating because when you shared your experiences, it gave so much insight. So I really got a lot out of it. So thank you so much. I'm uh, just recalling your words that, uh, or rather Bhakti Tita Maharaj's words that you just recounted how he said, I will be even more effective after I leave this planet. I will mm. be coming in dreams. And uh, I, I just remember this dream I had of uh, Bhakti Tita Maharaj because actually my first connection with the Hare Krishna movement was Bhakti Tita Maharaj's disciples at Gita Nagari. And uh, so therefore I have very fond memories of their love, their concern and Bhakti Tita Maharaj showering me with his love and concern and care. And when I had a dream very recently about Bhakti Tita Maharaj, I couldn't figure it out. I uh, just had difficulty understanding what Maharaj is trying to tell me. Of course, later on, I discussed it with uh, my Gurudev and the answer became more clear, but uh, your words vividly brought that uh, dream back to mind about how Maharaj is still with us. He's still instructing us and he will continue to guide us. So thank you very much for that. You're very welcome. So wonderful <laughs> that you, you had a, uh, you know, a dream of Maharaj. That's really nice. Um, so maybe whilst the uh, devotees might be formulating some questions, I might share this pastime. They're saying in the changing expectations of the spiritual master. Um, so I, I remember, you know, when Guru Maharaj would print his books, often the books were, uh, the printing was sponsored by various disciples. And I remember at one time, you know, saying to him, of, you know, uh, you know, I was sponsoring a book and stuff. And he wanted names of people who were sponsoring the book to make sure they went in the acknowledgements. And there were a few devotees sponsoring books. And he pointed out that it's really important that, uh, that devotees' uh, names are printed. Because I was saying, oh, it doesn't matter. I don't need my name printed. It's fine. He said, no, it's really important it's printed because it will attract the mercy and the credits from you doing this service. And so I held on to that. I remember that. Thought, okay, so it's really important when, you know, if we do this, that the, the names are printed in the book. So now, just before he, he was leaving in those final months, I sponsored another book. And I sponsored the whole book. And the draft copy came. And in the, uh, yeah, so he said, he said, okay, I'll phone uh, Harinam Press or I'll email them and I'll tell them to put your name in the acknowledgements. So I, I wasn't that bothered. I was like, okay, fine. I just remembered his instructions. It's important that the name's in there. And then when the print came, or the draft, I think it was the PDF came before the printed copy. I think they'd already finalized it, but instead of putting my name, something else was put there. I think it was my, I thank my disciples in Australia 
and UK for uh, sponsoring the printing of this book. So I pointed it out to Gurudev. And I said, oh, Gurudev, you know, uh, I know you contacted the devotees to put my name in the thing, but they've put um, the Australian disciples and then UK disciples. I, I said, again, I'm, I'm not really that fast. I just thought I'd point it out to you. And he looked at me and I said, you know, because uh, I know you said it's really important that our name's in the book uh, for us to get the, the, the mercy. And he looked at me, he said, he said, yes, but he said, it's even more powerful uh, when you give those credits away to the others. Look at how many devotees have benefited from your contribution and let them have the mercy. So this is what, my, what I mean by the guru rela disciple relationship is dynamic. It should always be growing. And the guru expecting more from us doesn't necessarily mean we have to do more. It may just mean that what we're doing needs to be done differently, with more compassion, with more selflessness. Um, and it's not about becoming a workaholic. Okay? So it's same with increasing our Vani Seva. Let's, let's try to follow what we already have more deeply, more heartfelt, um, and create an atmosphere in our home and in our hearts as if Gurudev is coming. I think there's a question in the chat room. Yes, Mataji. Mohanasini Mataji. How can we reveal our heart to Guru Maharaj if we have a problem? <clears throat> Depends what the problem's about and whether your spiritual master's input is important. Ask yourself, do you trust your spiritual master? Then under, try and understand what your doubt or fear is about not opening up. And when you've answered those questions, maybe first go through a practice run, write it out. This is the good thing about emails and letters. They don't have to be sent straight away. Yeah? And uh, then send it. But remember that our relationship with the guru is there to help us grow spiritually. Whilst it can be helpful for them to know our material situation, it's not essential. And the reason I'm saying this is, you know, of course, if there's a significant problem, it's important for them to know, then, well, then we should tell them. There's got to be some understanding of the disciple's situation. We don't want to leave them in the dark. At the same time, we don't want the guru to be micromanaging our day-to-day -day life. You know, we're just giving them more stress unnecessarily. So this is why good relationships with your God family are important. Um, so yeah, usually our, we struggle to open our heart because there's some fear. Um, maybe we're scared of receiving an instruction that we don't want, right? We really should only ask the guru for instruction if we're ready to accept whatever the guru says. And sometimes they surprise us, you know? <clears throat> I had, um, again, in Maharaj's final days, one devoted flown across from another country to ask Guru a specific thing. I think it was about a career move or an education move. And they were so attached to getting a answer, definitive answer to Guru Maharaj, uh, from Guru Maharaj about what they should do. They actually, when they went to see Guru Maharaj, interestingly, Guru Maharaj said, oh, actually, I don't mind. It's up to you which one you do. They got angry. They got angry and left in a huff. And I mean, I'm sure they realized afterwards, but we get attached to hearing a certain thing. Either it's that we're attached to hearing one way or the other, um, or, or we might even be attached to getting a definitive answer. But there are many things in our day-to-day -day life or spiritual life that actually there's, the guru's not so concerned about exactly how it's done. It's more the mood with which it's done. And of course, will it help our spiritual life? And different things help different people's spiritual life depending on where we're at and where we need to go. Um, so if you are struggling to open up your heart to spiritual master, first find out where your fear is. What's the fear? What's holding you back? And you can... Pre-write it, you can discuss it with God family, and then when you're ready, send it. Um, Moni Deepa, you've got your hand up. Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you so much. Please accept my obeisances. I'm going to do yes. this. 
Uh, you have helped me so much personally speaking in in both these three classes and uh, even in the I have so much deep respect for you and your your understanding of um, Guru Tattva. So, and I just wanted to say thank you. And I wanted to some the quick takeaways that I have, you know, for my personal behavior because I can be very short tempered sometimes. You mentioned that. Imagine that guru being present. Will you behave like that with your child? Or will you speak that way? And that is so helpful. And I'm trying to trying to follow as much as possible. And even today's instructions on writing to your spiritual master or talking to your spiritual master is so powerful because um, my Guru Maharaj is not geographically co-located. So it is really helpful to develop that relationship. Thank you so much, Mataji. Thank you so You're much. Right. Um, Monideep, I do want to say one thing. You know, this uh, when we're trying to meditate on how am I speaking and behaving and thinking in the way that would be pleasing to the spiritual master, sometimes we're quite hard on ourselves and we'll just try and cut it. Like, oh, I can't be like that because it's not pleasing. But it, we can also approach it with a little bit more maturity and self-compassion by saying okay I don't want to behave like that and I wouldn't behave like that if my spiritual master was here so how do I want to behave and what things can I use to help me behave and think and feel better because there could be many reasons why you're short-tempered sometimes it's we're tired could be hormones it could be habit it could be conditioning because that's how we saw our parents deal with us. It could be a number of things. Okay. Maybe. So just cutting it might help temporarily, but to understand it a bit more so that in the long term, you're not repeatedly having to cut it, but it actually changes within you. Uh, that is a, a service we can also do for the spiritual master and guru will reciprocate and Krishna will reciprocate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I do see a reflection of my father in me. And um, yeah, he was a strong character. Unlike, <laughs> good in some ways, but yeah, thank you so much for that insight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Srimati, over to you. What would you like to do? <laughs> yes, Mataji. Uh, any more questions, devotees? Okay, I think there are no more questions, Mataji. Um, and, We've uh, gone over them anyway, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, it uh, yeah, it's really helpful um, because uh, uh, we we'll know what where we are and what need we need to do um, to uh, strengthen our relationship with the Guru Maharaj and uh, follow his instructions uh, sincerely. So that uh, the, this session, uh, all the three parts, uh, helps a lot. Helped a lot, Mataji. Thank you so much. I'm very much grateful for you, uh, to you, sorry. Um, so you have taken time and uh, given us this association. Um, so much uh, wonderful, Mataji. I'm very happy. We are also very happy. Thank you. Thank you so uh -huh. much for having me. And it's been really nice to get to know some of you more. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope I'll meet more of you in person. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, sure. <laughs> and uh, um, whenever you come to USA, uh, please let us know and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have your... You're assist. in the USA? Okay. <laughs> We're in Dallas. <laughs> can't, can't tell on Zoom where anybody's based. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so um, much. Yeah. Thank please you. do, do more sessions with us, uh, God family. I, I, I'd be happy to. Just uh, reach out, let me know what you want to cover. I mean, to be honest, this topic of Guru that was huge. There's so many other areas we can go into. Um but, you know, these daily calls are an hour. They're supposed to be kind of like a, you know, uh, an opportunity to have a potent, uplifting punch in the day. You yes. know, and, uh, I think if they, they go on too long as well, then people are less, you know, keen to join. So um, I think we've covered maybe some good pointers and areas to start off with. Um, but, yeah, if there's anything else, any other topic that you feel is uh, the God family suggests is relevant, uh, for you, I'd be happy to serve again and spend some more time with you. Yeah, sure. Thank, you so much. thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, and uh, thank you, everyone, for having nice discussions. Um, thank you so much. Um, we'll end the call here. Thank you so much. His Holiness Chandramali Maharaj Ki Jai.